Hi guys, this is my first video using my new style. It's more raw, more more real, more me. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just watch my last video. It should explain everything. And this is kind of the reference for the next videos. And I think it's enough the next couple of minutes to decide for you if you like it or not, if you want to unsubscribe, if you love it, if you have anything to complain about it. But let's start this review. The review is about the Lenovo ThinkPad 8. It's an 8.3 inch Windows 8.1 tablet. Pretty much the highest spec one for now. So let's check that. Okay, this is actually my second attempt doing a review. I did a first one already and it's completely finished, but it's also 45 minutes long. And I really don't think anyone would watch this. So I'm giving it a second try and start with the device itself now. Let's just take a look at it first. The first thing here, it is the Windows button, which is capacitive, but not overly sensitive. So don't bother about hitting it. Don't be afraid, it won't really happen. So for the ports, here we have the USB 3.0 port. You can also use it as a USB 2, but of course you will lose the USB 3.0 functionality. It is also there for charging. Charging and using the USB 3.0 point won't work. Maybe with a Y cable, but since I don't have one and I don't really know if something like that's even available, this could not work. Okay, here we have the volume rocker and the power button. About those, the power button is pretty nice to handle. If you know where to look, you will find it. The volume rocker, not so much. It is shorter and a little bit flimsy, but that's not the issue. It's harder to find because it's flush and you have all those strips here. You have here, this one, this one, and it's just harder to find, but you will eventually get used to it. At the back, we have the camera. I won't really talk much about because you know what I think about cameras. It is there, it works. Same as the one on the front, but that's about all I'm saying. Here you also have a red LED which turns on when you turn on the device. Otherwise, I don't know what's the purpose of it. If you know it, you can let me know. On the other side, we have the micro SD card slot and the micro HDMI. And here's one issue. If you are using it like this in desktop mode, you can charge it and you can or you can use the USB, but you can't use the micro HDMI, not on a stand. If you try it with this, it just won't work. You can only use it in portrait mode. In portrait mode, both ports are accessible. That's no issue. So keep this in mind. This could be a problem for some people. In overall, the button placement in the ports is okay, but they made some weird, not super smart choices like the port placement and maybe the button but otherwise it's okay, it should get a job done, just should be no deal breaker. As for the design and the build quality, the design itself is pretty nice. Nice rounded corners like you can see here. This is something I will talk about later. It feels pretty sturdy in the hand, a slightly bit shallow on the backside, but this is nothing you will notice. This is just when you test it like this. And the good thing here is the aluminum finish at the back. It feels strangely different compared to the LG G-Pad because on the LG G-Pad it was really cold and it was very slippery. But here it is somehow coated and it never really feels cold and it is also pretty grippy all the time. And this is something really nice. The next thing would be the weight. It weighs 430 grams and I think it is a bit on the heavy side compared to maybe the Tab Pro 12, uh, 8.4 which is 100 grams less but it's still manageable and you have to really think what you get because most other Windows 8 tablets weigh more, maybe 50 grams less and 50 grams less, yes, that would, be the, that would be the perfect weight for it, but it's okay, no deal breaker. The plastic here though on the sides feels a bit cheap and I really don't like these edges. This shouldn't have been. Lenovo, please do this a bit more professional if it's a professional office device. Okay. As for this, something about the build quality, my edges here, I don't know if you will see this, I don't think it's visible on the camera, but they're pretty tanked up. There are a lot of nicks on the sides and this is how I got it out of the box. So the plastic really isn't made of the highest quality. Otherwise the thickness, it is 
thicker than the Tab Pro or the others. But I think you have something nice in the hand. If it would be any thinner, it would be just weird in the hand. And I really like this. And this about the corner. You can see there's a pretty nice rounded big corner. And I really like those because if you hold it in portrait, it's just nice to grip. You have a nice feeling and it also, because of this, doesn't feel that wide as it is. So the same goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. And the same goes for the bezels. I think they have pretty much the perfect size. I can rest my complete finger here, no problem. It doesn't slip anywhere. Also, as you can see here in portrait, it works. On the Tab Pro, I somehow accidentally tapped it sometimes. This doesn't happen here. So in overall, it is not the lightest, not the best built tablet, but definitely way above average. Still solid and sturdy with a smart design like the corners. The material choice is really outstanding. And, but still, there's a bit room for more improvement here. Let's talk about one of the most important parts of this tablet, the display. We have an 8.3 inch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1200. This is an aspect ratio of 16 by 10, which is in my opinion the smarter and more useful one on Windows tablets. It is also the sharpest Windows tablet due to the highest PPI. And overall, the high PPI and this, because of the scaling could be a problem for some people. But for me, the higher re resolution is worth the extra money. Text like on PDFs, in the browser and everything is just so much sharper and really makes up for it. Really, believe me, sharpness really makes up for a lot. A lot of people say an 8 inch Windows tablet doesn't scale good, it's not worth it, but I say it is worth it. So as for the whites, as you can see here, maybe it's not that visible on the video, but the whites are slightly on the warmer side. It can be optimized within the settings, but if you see it just like that with no comparison to any other tablet, like maybe the Tab Pro or, or someone or some tablet with more neutral colors, you will definitely be pleased by it. It is nothing to complain about. If you adjust it, maybe you can even make it better for you. As for the blacks, as you can see here, the blacks are pretty nice. There is a little bit of brighter black. It could be maybe a bit darker, but most others don't do this any better. So I'm definitely not complaining. The backlight bleeding is also absolutely uniform. It is completely on the whole side, completely even. If you would see a bit of light emitting, it would be here at the bottom on this line. You see a few lights shining through, but you really only notice this at dark with the display pretty bright and a dark background. Otherwise, you won't see this. For the colors, the colors, as you can maybe see here, let's turn it completely up. The colors are completely nice. They are, are really true to life, not oversaturated. Most times, you need a bit more brightness on Windows tablets, I think, to make the colors look more vivid. But you can also use the display options to give it a more bit saturation or something like this. But in overall, especially when you, if you are looking videos, it is more like looking at the plasma. You get really natural colors. And this is something I really like. Definitely, colors are absolutely nice. About the brightness, as you maybe can see it here already, it can get pretty dim, but there are a few ones and it can also get pretty bright. There are a few ones that get dimmer, but also brighter. The Tab Pro, for, ex for example, gets way brighter. Also the Nexus 7. This one gets fairly enough. It is definitely more than okay, more than you would need. The viewing angles, I can't really show you this because of the glare. I could try to, but it wouldn't translate over the video anyways. But what I can say you, I'm absolutely happy with the viewing angles because they are not just stable, horizontal and vertical, which are most IPS tablets nowadays. They are pretty stable even on 45 degree angles if you are holding it like, which you don't do much, but sometimes you just do. And most tablets don't just lose brightness, they also wash out the colors pretty much. And on this display, you only lose a bit of brightness, which is perfectly normal but the colors don't change. The colors are pretty much the same still. As for the glass, they don't use Gorilla Glass here. They, they use Dragon Tail. This is a bit less slippery and has a bit more friction and also has a coating for anti-fingerprints. As for the less friction, it is pretty nice because you have to do a lot of long pressing on Windows. And it's good when you don't slip if you try it. 
on the tab pro there was a lot of slipping and i really prefer this it has the right amount of a nice feeling you can slip if you want but you also don't if you don't want to about the fingerprint coding it shows the fingerprints this is a sure thing you can't avoid this but it definitely makes a slightly better job than most others because you don't notice the fingerprint that much and it is easier to clean if you want to so let's get to the maybe important part about the scaling yes a few apps really scale a bit weirdly they are a bit small as you can see here this is a bit hard to use but i also use 150 percent scaling you could easily use 200 and things get bigger but i like those small stuff i can use it for me it's okay because i get more screen real estate so for me this is not a problem so in overall there are better displays out there but not really on windows tablets on other platforms maybe like ios or on android but you won't find a better display i think in overall qualities because of the sharpness and the overall color qualities in terms of just color accuracy sharpness not sharpness but brightness and colors and something like this the dell venue takes the cake the 11 i don't know the 8 but all of those others have a way higher ppi and that's why this one is the best display on a windows tablet for me okay let's check the sound here and i can say you pretty much up front the sound is the poorest part of this tablet it is disappointing it gets the job done but just listen for yourself this is 100 percent As you can see, the maximum volume isn't really good. It is just about enough. It gets the job done. You can listen to background music and YouTube videos are okay, but don't, don't expect any bass at all. There are a bit of mids, and it's, but it's mostly treble. It is not really suited for anything more than YouTube videos and background music. The speaker placement is pretty much the worst I've seen so far because you have what they call stereo speakers and yes they are stereo speakers but if you hold it like this which you will most probably do when you're listening to music you have it on only one side so i don't consider it being stereo if you hold it in portrait you could say these are but since they are so close together i don't call this stereo speakers and also if you lay it flat they don't really get muffled they don't get blocked but the sound laying flat on the table also doesn't get any better. And that's the poor part because on most others, as soon as you hold it in your hand or something like this, the sound gets better because it reflects. The good thing here is you don't really block it because it's just about on the corner and you don't block it. That's okay, as you can see here. But since the sound doesn't get any better, you also don't have really any benefit of this position. That's a bit sad, but what can you do? Overall, it is the weakest point, a major letdown, but it gets the jo job done mostly. As for the performance part, this tablet is about as fast as the Atom Bay Trail probably can get. It is on par with the Omni 10 and on par with the Dell Venue 11. And due to me running already the Update 1, it seems even sl ever so slightly smoother and more consistent in all, all it does. Sun Spider scores are about at 400 milliseconds, 300 in the Metro UI and slightly over 500 in Chrome. For the disk speeds, I got slightly over 160 in read and slightly over about 66 it was on write speeds. And this is significantly faster than most others have. It is not that much, but the others got about, I think, 90 and 40 read and write. So this is about on par with the Acer slightly better maybe so i'm pretty happy about that but but uh, but about the browser performance let quickly let's quickly check this if you use the browser if you never use win a windows browser before you will notice this this is not just smooth this is not just lag free this is brutally smooth brutally lag free this is absolutely the zooming, the performance is unmatched, unrivaled, I think. If you are using Chrome, things get a little bit slower. As you will see here, this still looks very smooth. 
but not brutally smooth. Browsing as well, as you can see, it is a bit choppy. If you use Chrome though with a mouse, you won't notice it because you don't have smooth scrolling there. You won't notice, except the loading times are a bit longer. Therefore, I would still recommend to use, if you want to, as long, especially in the, in the touch-based operating. Use the Internet Explorer. It is the fastest one. Firefox just works, but it is really much slower. So either use Chrome with a slight bit of drawback in speed. Scrolling is not the issue, but the loading times are noticeably you see you see a rendering which you don't even see on uh, on the Internet Explorer. As for the Wi-Fi reception, I think it is pretty good. 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. I got no reception issues. With 5 GHz, I got speeds of about almost 20 megabytes, not just bits, megabytes per second. And only the Surface 2 Pro with AC got the same results and also the Ultrabook I used. Otherwise, most of the other tablets, they got around 11 to 13 megabytes, which is still quite acceptable. And using not AC Wi-Fi, this is pretty good. I don't even know if this one reuses IC. I would have to check it, but the speeds are definitely great. So that's it for the performance. I would say in overall, it is the best performing 8-inch tablet and on power with the 10-inch tablets, no problem here. You have no real restrictions due to the smaller screen. Everything is just smaller. But performance isn't hindered. You don't get the SSD, but on the Atom Bay Trail, you don't get this anyways. And it is even one of the faster ones, faster than on the other side tests so far. It is easily more than good enough for casual use. Office, no problem. Video rendering and so works with Cyberlink Power Director. It is slightly, it is slightly above real time. It works. Everything you would expect from it works. But don't accept too much. It is, after all, just an 8-inch tablet. Okay, you can say because of the performance, it is a 10 inch tablet in a smaller form factor. And if you use dual monitor mode, which will use at least about 10% of RAM more, then you will lose a bit performance. 4 gigabyte would have been nice, but only in tablet mode. You, you won't notice 2 gigabytes or 4 gigabytes. If you switch between apps, this it, it can't really get faster. You don't have any lag, you don't have any slowdowns. This is pretty much perfect, as you can see here. The, there is nothing to complain. Performance absolutely above every other mobile OS. I still don't consider Windows to be a mobile OS, just a touch optimized system, but for me, it's the best. And that's about what I have to say. This part could maybe don't seem to fit right in within the performance part, but I forgot it and I didn't want to leave it out, but it is the PDF performance. If you can see this, how fast and smooth this works, of course, this is over my network and it is streaming directly. And yes, there is sometimes a bit of re-rendering visible, but it is so marginal. And when you zoom, it is so fast. And once it's maybe cached a little bit, it is so fast. And usually this may be a bit heavier PDF file. If I use a smaller one, you wouldn't even notice this. But I wanted to show this because if you check my Tab Pro review, you will see how poor this performs. And I will also do a comparison with the Tab Pro and then you will see the difference. But if you're reading a lot and here you will also notice the higher PPI because you can actually you can read this. It doesn't maybe seem like this. Let me zoom in. But as you can see here, it is possible. It is small. But it is possible. Of course, you can zoom and make it easier. But believe me, this performance if you are reading PDF files, is worth it. Let's talk about the battery life real quick. A full charge needs about three and a half to four hours. That's pretty long compared to the competition and the charges are two amp, but consider one thing. If you get to maybe 95%, you are there in three and a half hours. The last 5% almost need a half an hour. So if you don't consider it to get it loaded fully in four hours, you can expect maybe three and a half. And most casually, I will do it anyways overnight so the charging isn't that much of an issue right now only because of heavy testing i wanted to have all this loaded and then i i noticed the longer loading times the charging times otherwise i wouldn't but as for the battery life it was good for me for six hours of straight casual work videos browsing office work i think it would be less of course with heavy loads with a brightness 
higher. I used about 40% maybe. But six hours should be easily achievable. Maybe you get six and a half, seven in video with only videos, even more maybe. But six hours with what I, what I got with the same conditions on the Acer, I got maybe seven hours. So I think it is noticeably worse, but not really bad. For me, six hours only in the testing period was a bit hard. Using it in daily life, I would it would be enough for two days or three days because on work days, I don't use the tablet that much. I only check my emails and the casual stuff. I don't do that much, so it would be enough. And one thing I already mentioned about the USB, you can't use charging and the USB port at the same time. Maybe, like I said, with the Y cable, I can't test it. So be sure to have Bluetooth peripherals if you use it in desktop mode, because if you use it in desktop mode, you won't, you, you can't lose it for a longer period of time because you can't charge it and use the peripherals. Let's go over the software real quick. I'm using Windows 8.1, already updated one. It is not official yet, but it works. So you get a few nice enhancements, like let's say you can pin your modern UI apps now to the taskbar. And I think this is pretty handy because you can just quickly jump. You don't have to do this every time you want to jump. I think it's a pretty nice change and a nice improvement. You also have some things like with the mouse, you can directly hit the X to exit apps. So in overall, 8.1 update one is definitely worth updating over 8.1. But what else do we get? We get about 40 gigabyte free out of 64. There are a few, as you can see here, quite a bunch of Lenovo apps. I would call it bloat apps because I don't see any use of it. There were a few more, but I uninstalled them. So about the stability, I had a problem with a communication manager that always crashes when you start a device and you have to maybe close it for five, six times. I don't really know what it does or what it doesn't do. So I don't bother that much. It is a bit annoying if you restart your device more often, but if you don't do this, this is no problem. Otherwise, I had two blue screens, so it's not completely stable yet. And this is not because of the update one, because it was also before. But this is it. You, I, I talked about the scaling. You could, I, I personally use 150%. If you use 200%, everything just gets easier. But as you can see here, I manually can resize this. Usually I use a bigger one, but because I did some testing and stuff, I did it smaller. Usually I do this bigger and then I have no issue even touching these menus with the 150%. But in overall, I really like the software. Windows 8.1 is a really nice tablet or operating system. Sure, a few apps are missing. I would like to have a few modern UI apps like for my squeeze box, but otherwise I have my YouTube, I have my news, read, my news feed reader. The Google Plus app isn't the best, but it works. You have Google search, so you're mostly covered. But if you expect to see the awesome apps you get on Android or iOS, this won't happen. So if you are okay with that what you have, and if you get most of the things in Metro UI apps or modern UI apps, and you are okay with the, therefore have the bigger abilities in terms of desktop apps, then this is for you. But everyone has to decide this for himself. This is no easy solution, no easy decision, but for me it is because of some other things. So, yeah, as for the gaming, I did a few a little bit of gaming tests, not really much, but you can play some lighter games. Yeah, Counter-Strike works and those older games, the, the, the Play Store, I don't even know what it's called, the store apps, they work. I, I tested um, Asphalt 8. It runs smoothly, not really as good as on the Tab Pro or maybe on some other high-end Android devices, but it, it's completely good enough. Therefore, it looked somehow better. It, it seems to have more effects or something like this. It just looked a bit more better, but maybe also that's because of the screen. But that's it for the software. For me, it's still the superior operating system on the tablet, but that's just me. Everyone has to note, if you're used to Android on a tablet, you could maybe think, this doesn't stand a change. And I thought the same until using the HP Omni, which completely changed my mind about Windows 8 tablets. So for me, it is worth it because I have the real desktop as browsing experience, which is just unbelievably. I don't know why it lags just now. It's a bit, usually it doesn't happen. Maybe it's my fingers, but that's about it for the software.
Okay, let's end this review with my summary and my opinion. And I hope I covered everything because I left out some details because as I mentioned, I made a longer version with 45 minutes that had a lot of more small little details I had to leave out. If you want that version, which I don't believe, I can upload it as well since it's already ready. But let's get to the summary. You get a very well built and designed tablet in overall. A few small flaws like the button placement, the port placement, and the speaker performance isn't really, it's subpar, let it be like that. Battery life is good, not outstanding. It should get a job done and it is slightly worse than the other competitors. But I would say it's okay. And sorry about the eyes, it's a bit bright in here. Please don't mind that. About the OS performance, for me it is still unmatched on that form factor. 8.3 inch for a Windows tablet for me is the perfect sweet spot with the 1080p screen. With the smaller dis display resolution like 1280 by 800 things just looked a bit fuzzy and with the 1080p it didn't. And that's what I really liked. It was more satisfying for longer times to hold compared to a 10 inch tablet and that's why I like those. Otherwise it kicks about every other mobile OS platform for me personally in terms of performance. Sadly not in app app variety or something like this. Also the typing experience isn't that good. But for me the performance and it just makes up for it the browsing experience and the apps I need I get mostly. It's not perfect but it's on a good way. And it is also way more versatile than most of the Android tablets. It uses a USB 3.0 port which allows you to use 3.0 disk drives. It has a HDMI which allows you to hook it up to any TV and use it as a media station which you can do out of the box with most of the Android tablets. So that's a big plus for me. So in overall, if you want the best 8 inch Windows tablet, I don't see anything else besides the ThinkPad right now available. If you maybe want a better price performance ratio then yes. If you don't care about USB 3, if you don't care about the HDMI, go for the Dell Venue 8 or go for the Lenovo Mix 2.8. It's okay. Also if you are willing to pay a bit more and want 10 inches or higher, get the Dell Venue 11 Pro or the HP Omni if you want to save money and still get a better device, the bigger device. But for me right now it is the best available Windows tablet and I would say it gets my highest recommendation but there's I think only one sign that really shows my highest recommendation and that is I will keep this device. I won't return it, I won't, I will keep it. Maybe not this one because of the nicks I had and I don't really like it because if I want to sell it maybe in one year I won't get that much money because of this. So I will return it but I will definitely keep this ThinkPad because the last few days I used it so intensively and it did everything my Android devices do but with a few enhancements I got a way better Wi-Fi speed which allowed me for better media streaming I could watch all my 1080p files perfectly without any issues which I couldn't with the Android device because they always had to buffer or didn't get the good reception speeds and also what you will see in my Tab Pro 8.4 review I will do a pretty detailed comparison between those two not just the devices but also Android versus Windows and I will compare the apps and you will notice the PDF. I read a lot of PDFs and whoa the PDF performance is so much better. It is perfectly smooth. I didn't even show this in the video. I will try to cut it in. But it is so much better. It's hard to believe. So in overall, for me, it's the best tablet right now out there. It is not the perfect hardware. But the overall hardware and software for me right now is unmatched and gets my highest recommendations. So that's it. Please leave me any comments, maybe even about the new style, the raw, the more raw format, if you liked it, if you don't like it, if you want to unsubscribe, maybe let me know. Otherwise, if you have any other questions or anything else you want to say, just share it in the comments. So until next time.